Welcome traders <clears throat> to this week's live market friendly analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Uh, we're going to get started here in just the next 30 seconds. <clears throat> if you can hear me and you can uh, you can see the uh, tick me welcome screen, you can type a Y in the chat box so I know that we are good to go. Okay, so before we get started with today's material, uh, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, most importantly for today's conversation, uh, the views or opinions uh, expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, my name is Patrick Manley. Uh, after I graduated university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm, I, uh, I ultimately left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found an exit, a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. So I had pretty much a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. Uh, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P, or more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to basically average down into what were ultimately going to prove to be uh, losing positions. And I ultimately took a six-figure hit to my personal capital. So this was a gut-wrenching, sobering experience and understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that crucially suited my personality, extensively back and forward testing strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift that occurred was that I moved from being a highly goal-oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-oriented. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and the hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. In 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering again annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. From 2010, I have also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the market. In addition to my uh, fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tigna. My other, I guess, passion project is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called FXCareerSwap.com. We offer development and more importantly, funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders market and strategy knowledge, we also work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And if you would like to find out more about FX Career Swap, I'd suggest you uh, give the trading desk in London a call or drop them an email and they'll come back to you uh, with further information about, uh, about the program. Okay, so uh, that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into the charts. And I wanna start this week by um, revisiting the VIX. Now, the VIX basically, or the, the fear index, <coughs> is, is a measure of, uh, of 
protection levels in the market. So when, when the VIX is low, so and we're, we're pretty low at the moment, trading 14.26, that suggests that the market is quite complacent and comfortable with, uh, with, the equi with, with, with equity prices. And it suggests that there's a strong um, risk. Sorry, there's, the sound is crackly. Uh, is, is anyone else having an issue with the sound? Okay, I think maybe uh, Martin, you might need to uh, log out and log back in. Um, that might uh, that might correct the sound issue. Okay, so back to the VIX. Um, like I say, it's it's a it's a measure of market um, anxiety or complacency. Uh, in this instance, I'm referring to complacency. We're trading down into uh, certainly the lower range. Uh, since uh, last year, uh, since the pandemic peak here, which obviously there was a huge amount of anxiety and that sent the VIX uh, soaring higher. At the same time, the S&P, which is the orange line down here, was in decline. And then as the VIX has been drifting lower, the market has ultimately been drifting higher. But what I'm anticipating now, and uh, certainly from a, a cyclical perspective, we're running it, coming into a period here where I see a window for the VIX actually to correct higher, not necessarily into the the top, the top side of the channel, but certainly we could be thinking about the midpoint of the channel. And if that's going to play out, and that's going to impact the equity markets. Now, um, for those who are trading with me in the Tickmill um, Futures and Options Strategy Group, you'll know that I've been aggressively trading on the long side, really, uh, predominantly for, uh, for the past couple of months. And I fear now, or I think the setup is coming, that we are coming into a period where I think these markets are going to correct. Um, what we've got uh, on a number of these equity markets is some uh, leading, di oh, sorry, ending diagonal patterns. And uh, if we jump onto the intro, the four hour chart, we get a better view here of what it is I'm looking at in terms of the S&P. So what I anticipate now, we've got a, a nice structure developing here. We've had uh, a five way pattern develop now, the wave four low, which was a symmetry swing support versus the uh, wave uh, two low, uh, meant that we trade back into the wave one, which technically speaking doesn't occur or shouldn't occur in terms of the strict Elliott wave parameters. The only time it will tend to occur is when we have an ending diagonal pattern developing. So what I'm anticipating now in the coming session, certainly today, tomorrow, uh, I think we can drift higher here, but any move up into the, uh, the top side of this channel, I'm paying very close attention to how the, uh, the, the price responds there. And if we start to see sellers emerge, uh, ideally what I'd like to see is a, is a small pullback here to set up this fifth wave extension into uh, this 4,300 level on the S&P. And uh, a note that we've got uh, a bunch of momentum divergence in place. Certainly you can see it on the, uh, the daily chart here much more clearly. Uh, let me get rid of this window here. Um, so you can see we've got plenty of momentum divergence. So what I'm looking for is one more high here to complete this interim cycle. And then what I'm going to be looking to do is to, uh, is to fade this new high, um, watching for bearish reversal patterns to, to ultimately get set short position to play for a correction. Now, when I talk about uh, the, the correction here, what I'm looking for is a move equal to the last leg that we saw to the downside. And we're on the four hour chart here, um, but certainly what I can what I anticipate could be developing for us is that, uh, is that we trade up into that 4,300 and then we see some, uh, some profit taking and we get a pullback basically into the, uh, into the 4,100 area. Now, um, Again, want to pay attention certainly to, uh, to tomorrow, uh, late in the day tomorrow, or um, on, at, at the open on Sunday to see if we fire, if this pattern is going to play out. Uh, as most of you will know who uh, follow my work, Mondays and uh, sorry, Fridays and Mondays tend to be uh, periods during which we can see a interim or local high or local low in terms of depending on which market you're looking at. So that's the pattern I'm watching really closely in terms of these, uh, these S&Ps now as we head into the back end of uh, this week. Notes on the weekly chart, we looked at this uh, last week, we, uh, we took out, 
let's see if this one updates. Yeah, so we we got to we got to break through this uh, ascending trend line support from uh, from the post pandemic. Uh, sorry, from the pandemic lows, and then we've snapped back. And uh, and so what I'm looking for, like I say, is the test of this top side now. And then I think we can see again. We've got plenty of divergence here on the weekly chart. I think we've set up then uh, for a pullback. And then this uh, directly feeds into uh, the dollar situation. Because again, if we are going to see a pullback in terms of risk sentiment, then that should see the, uh, the dollar supported. So the dollar uh, took out its weekly descending trend line resistance. We're now having a bit of a pullback. And if we go to the four hour chart here and put up the dollar, <clears throat> we've got a really nice um, technical pattern developing here. Whilst we, uh, whilst we hold, uh, for now anyway, this uh, 91.90, if we can get a, a pullback here into uh, weekly range support, 91.18, and we've got the top side of this trend channel that we broke out to the upside, more often than not, uh, where we get what is potentially here a wave three extension, or certainly we could uh, classify it as that, we get a corrective pullback that tests the top side of the channel that sets up the wave five or, or sorry, gives wave four low, and then that sets up for a wave five extension to the upside. If we just go on to the daily chart here, I'll show you what it is, uh, what it is we're looking for. Let me remove those. So what I'm anticipating now with the dollar, um, certainly into, uh, into the Fed Jackson Hole uh, meeting end of August is that we can, uh, we can potentially grind it out to the upside here. And the target for, for this corrective move will be that 93.73. And then we've got that yearly pivot just above there at 94. So that's what I'm anticipating is going to, uh, to play out in the dollar. And, uh, and then that's going to immediately feed into, obviously, our euro view. So we'll pull up the, the, the euro chart. So again, what I'm anticipating here is that we are in a corrective phase with the euro, and I'm looking for any move really into this 120 up into weekly range resistance, 120.25. Any move up into there is going to be an opportunity uh, to get short in my mind, and certainly what I'd be thinking about would be the downside of this uh, projected channel here, 117. But I think we should be back retesting these lows and certainly if the dollar is gonna to break to the upside as anticipated. So I'm watching for this correction to complete in the Euro and I'll be looking for bearish reversal patterns in this zone to set short positions. Sterling, interestingly, has, uh, has, all, has potentially going to give me a, a signal here on this four hour candle close. We came just shy of the equal legs objective. So we had a, a B and an equality C would, uh, would give us 140.17. But we're starting to roll over here on the four hour time frame. I'm just going to see if this, uh, this trend candle using the five period uh, VWAP will, uh, will turn red at the close. We've got the psych indicator crossing down negatively to the downside and the momentum starting to roll over. So it could be that Sterling is going to lead the way lower here. The alternative scenario will be that we don't get a signal and we're going to do a double correction. Let me just draw get rid of that for a second. So like I say, we could uh, we could hold some support here, maybe the daily uh, range support holds, and we get a double correction develop. Um, and that could take us up into the top side of this channel here or certainly back into this prior support zone at the uh, 140.80. Again, any bearish reversal patterns from there will be a signal to, uh, to get in on the downside. But this candle is, uh, is rolling over now. It's just flipped red, as you can see, which would be, uh, which would be an intraday signal there on the downside for Sterling. Um, the Aussie, <clears throat> a bunch of these majors are pretty much in the same position. And what I'm looking for is the corrections to complete here. And then we should see, uh, certainly the Aussie, we've got this equality objective to the downside versus uh, this structure here. So we have our A, B, and an equal leg C will take us down into uh, 74.20. So I'm watching for uh, reversal patterns, weekly range resistance, 76.20, daily range resistance, 76.40. Uh, so when you move into this zone, I think will be an opportunity on the short side in terms of uh, in terms of the Aussie. Similar story really in the Kiwi. <clears throat> Got a, a sharp correction uh, developing here. So I'm looking for a pullback 
uh, to find some support to get that next, to get that equal legs in terms of uh, in terms of the corrections complete. And then similar with the uh, the Aussie, we have this um, corrective structure here. Uh, we have this B high C equal legs low will be sixty seven ninety eight is the downside target there in terms of uh, in terms of the Kiwi. Swiss yen, a couple of these yens, and again, the yens have kind of led the uh, led the charge on the upside, pretty much in line with, uh, with, the, with the equity indexes. But we are starting to see some weakness. We were looking at this um, Swiss yen last week on the uh, weekly chart. Let me just pull that up. And uh, big outside reversal. Didn't actually flip the candle uh, red yet, but uh, I think if we are going to correct here into get an ABC uh, corrective pattern develop. Uh, certainly, again, thinking in terms of the, the synchronicity in the market, so wanting to see these patterns kind of play out as maybe the S&P makes that new high. Um, so certainly any, move, any swing pattern that sets up like this into the 121.40 area, I'll be paying very close attention, looking for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions. Similar story in the Kiwi yen again, Highly, cor <coughs> highly, cor excuse me, highly correlated uh, to the risk risk sentiments, and so I think we got we get a pullback here, and then another leg of corrective action uh, before I've been looking to uh, to get in on the short side in terms of the Kiwi yen, Aussie yen, similar story again, highly correlated to uh, risk sentiments, and we've had a, uh, a sharp leg here to the upside. So what I've been looking for now is a pullback into this potentially into this zone here at the 83.17, and then another leg to the upside. And certainly we could think in terms of that trend line there. So any move up into this 84.50 will, uh, will be an opportunity to look at short positions. Let's take a look at some of the, uh, the metals now. <coughs> Gold, again, I, uh, I like this on the short side. We've got, versus this swing low here at the uh, 117.72, the B low, we have a C quality objective, what, uh, 1800. And so watching again, and we've got that daily range resistance coming in there, 1803. So any extension here in gold into this zone, again, I'm gonna be looking for uh, bearish reversal signals uh, to get to set short positions and certainly targeting a new low in gold. We go back to the weekly chart. We looked at this last week. Gold. <clears throat> you can see we have this broadening uh, pattern that's developing here. So any move into this 1735 is going to be a pivotal test for gold because if we fail there, uh, then we're looking at downside targets at 1649 and uh, 1520 uh, versus the swing structures that we have in place here at the moment. So I want to uh, want to really pay attention to. Uh, how we trade, if we trade into this uh, 1730 level. And again, if we're thinking in terms of the dollar uh, grinding it out to the upside, that should, uh, that should weigh on gold there. And we should see that move uh, in potentially to test this trend line support. And if we break there, then we'll be looking at uh, short positions. Got a similar story in terms of silver. <clears throat> again, we've had, let me just go rid of these drawings. So we've had this impulsive move here coming out of uh, this consolidation zone, breaking to the downside. And um, we're, not, we're, not, we're really struggling to, uh, to get mount any momentum on the upside. So for me, in terms of silver now, again, similar setup to, uh, to the gold here. What I'd be looking for would be any move into this 2650 zone. Um, we've got daily range resistance and weekly range resistance 2694. Um, that should be an opportunity, similar to the gold story, uh, to get in on the short side. And certainly we can think about um, probably weekly range support down to 24.98 before, uh, before we see any major correction. You can see there, if we're going to call, if we, if we call this the, the one, two section. So this, uh, what we're looking for when we're looking to uh, place targets for these fifth wave extensions, we want to think about the equality objective versus wave one. Because more often than not, that's where these uh, these patterns will uh, will complete. And so, if we get an equal legs move into 2650, watch for bearish reversal patterns, set short positions, and we can target certainly move down to $25 and uh, 24.90 as uh, as weekly range support. 
<coughs> crude oil, obviously being on a tear. And actually, I want to take a look at crude on the daily time frame. Let's, uh, let's look this up. So the level really now that's a, a significant interest for me anyway, in terms of uh, crude is this prior high here. So 77.20, you can see um, that we can extend into that zone we, uh, so what I've been looking for would be this type of scenario up into that 7720 uh, level. And as long as by the time we get up there, we've still got momentum divergence, then I think we can start to think about a move back into the 67 for the next leg to the upside, more likely than not through the $80 level in terms of uh, crude. But near term, okay, and thinking in terms of risk sentiment, obviously crude is a, is a barometer of a risk appetite in the market to a large degree. If we're getting to see these, uh, these equity markets roll over, see a bit of strength in the yen, then we'd be anticipating that crude uh, should struggle here into that 77.20. A few more of these dollar crosses. <coughs> Let's go to the four hour time frame on these. Uh, I'm watching the Swissy. Looking for the Swissy here to test its equal legs. So versus this swing high here at 92.13, I'm watching for the Swissy to get down into 91.44. And from there, looking for a bullish reversal pattern to set long positions. And we certainly think about 92.90 to the 93 level as, uh, as a decent upside objective for the Swissy. Looney. Again, we technically, um, versus this swing structure here, I don't, this hasn't subdivided as, as cleanly as you'd like, but certainly versus this swing now, we've hit the equal legs objective. Uh, 122.68, and uh, buyers have stepped in. But I personally, what I would, the, the area I would really uh, be more interested in, in looking at in terms of uh, the looning is a correction uh, higher here, but then ultimately getting another leg to the downside and getting a test of this uh, ascending trend line support, uh, the 161 extension of that initial uh, reaction high there. So 121.80s, uh, bullish reversal patterns there, I think, are a interesting opportunity because then what you've got is the potential to play for the equality objective to the upside so we could be thinking then about trading into this 126.60 area and uh, these prior highs so any move into this zone i'm paying really close attention to looking again obviously for those bullish reversal patterns to uh, to get in on the long side uh, the dollar yuan <coughs> Now, this is another key barometer uh, of the dollar strength or the dollar story because this trade is pretty much the proxy for the Aussie. And you can see here, if we think in terms of the, uh, the structure that we've got and how, uh, how we'd like to look at it, one, two, this is going to be our third wave here. And then we're going to be looking at a, a four down here and then a fifth up here. So if, you, if we measure this corrective leg here and we overlay it versus the high here so what we could think in terms of a symmetry swing we've got daily range support there coming in at the six uh 646 area so what i'd like to see is move down into there like so buy a step in and we get the fifth wave extension here and again we use wave one as our target to uh to give us our outside objective and then that, if this pattern is going to play out as it looks like it, uh, it could do at the moment, then that's going to feed into the Aussie and the Kiwi. And, um, and go, like I say, you can pretty much trade those as a proxy. So we get uh, another, another corrective leg before setting up, uh, setting up the move to the, uh, to the downside. Uh, what was the Sterling Yen. <clears throat> So sterling yen uh, was trading up into, looks like we're gonna get potentially here, if we go to the daily time frame, get a better view of it. So it's starting to roll over here. We haven't made, we haven't made a new high. We've got side negatively orientated and we've got the uh, momentum. The momentum looks also like it's gonna roll over. So I want to pay close attention tonight to the close here in Sterling Yen because I think we're setting up for a corrective move to play out equal legs 
uh, to the downside here, looking for 150.40. So if this candle uh, closes at or below these current levels, then I see an opportunity on the short side. And we're not, I'm not, uh, we're not calling tops or, or thinking about uh, crashes here in the market, but certainly we can reasonably anticipate that that's, this structure is in place. So we have an ABC and, uh, and that should give us something like this on the downside here before we see if the market's going to pick back up to the top side. And the reason why I'm interested in, in trading this corrective pattern is again, thinking in terms of the basics, on this high, did we have momentum divergence? And we did have quite a bit of it actually. So there's certainly the potential here uh, for a tradable corrective pattern back into this 150.40 in, uh, in terms of the sterling yen. And those are, uh, that's a snapshot really of, of the charts that I'm uh, tracking at the moment. Like I say, my major interest uh, heading into the back end of this week is going to be watching how this S&P trades as, the, as the, the, the risk barometer, as the barometer for risk in the market, keeping an eye on that VIX and keeping an eye on the dollar and some of these dollar majors, because uh, if, if we are going to get the potential for a turn here in uh, risk sentiment and a pop in the VIX, that should support the dollar. And then we should have opportunity to, uh, to trade the dollar majors uh, to the short side. So uh, those are the, uh, the key dynamics uh, and drivers that I'm watching at the moment. And uh, with that, I'll open up if anyone has any questions or anyone wants to take a look at the chart I haven't covered. Uh, feel free to type it into the uh, type it into the chat box, or um, I could unmute your mic. Uh, Euro sing dollar four hour. Okay, let's go. Uh, four hour. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's take a look at that. Four hour. So we've had, let's uh, go back here and see. <clears throat> just get a bit more data on the screen. <clears throat> so we're pretty much trading in a range here at the moment. You know, this uh, is 163 to 163.50 is the top of the range. And obviously we have a bit of a spike lower here, 157. So there are a couple of scenarios that could play out. This could be setting up as an inverse head and shoulders. So we get another extension to the downside, maybe into that monthly range support. And, uh, and from there, we head back up into range resistance uh, is one scenario. Let me just change that. Um, the other scenario here is technically, let's uh, see if we have, we traded the equal legs there pretty much to the tick. So we could classify this as being an impulsive move to the upside. And, um, and if we, and then we, we'd be classifying this as a corrective pattern. Um, let's see here for the trace notes. So yeah, we've traded pretty much 61, uh, 61.8 into, um, into that equal legs objective there. So what we could actually see here is maybe a pullback, and then you could be thinking uh, the next bullish reversal. So as we, we're, we're rolling over a bit here, but once this four hour momentum gets back down uh, into the oversold zone, then I'd be watching, especially if we, if the candle, if we get a candle flip here uh, from green to red, the next green rotation could be, uh, could be a decent buying opportunity. Does that make sense? Yeah, and e equally that that could you know that, that could be where we're going. But at this point, um, what I'd also pay a little bit of uh, bit of attention to here, I mean, is the fact that uh, we've broken out here to the upside in terms of uh, in terms of the side. So that suggests there's a bit of underlying strength coming in. And if this next four hour rotation can't uh, make a new low in price, as it has done on each other uh, on every other rotation. And that starts to give you the signal that, uh, that maybe uh, we're, uh, we're going to see another leg higher here in terms of the uh, euro sing dollar. But thanks for the question. Uh, this is my first session, Patrick. So what indicates you're using terms of the trade? Because I'm confused. Uh, Ruth, I have um, proprietary indicators. Um, you, you don't need to use those. You could, uh, you could just use, uh, 
you know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not pushing any, any indicator. I simply use these because they work for me and they're based around um, volume weighted average price. This indicator here at the bottom is a cycle indicator, which is just an enhanced version of the RSI that gives better, better read or um, visually works for me as well. Uh, the candles are colored um, based upon whether or not they're trading above or below the volume weighted average price. So it's, uh, it's just giving me an, an easily identifiable read on, uh, on trend. Um, uh, Vix, how do you add the spoons line? Yeah, so um, here, let's go to the Vix again. So that's the Vix there, Ben. And then what you do is you go to compare and you hit S&P and new pane and hey presto. Okay, are there any other questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, type an N in the chat box so I know uh, we're all on the same page and I can, uh, can wrap this session up here. Uh, Ruth, if you want further information about the indicators, um, you can go to uh, the Trader Blueprint group on, uh, on Facebook. Let me just see if I can pull that up here. Uh, so, do, 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 do. Um, here we go. If you uh, you can join that group, um, Ruth. I'll put it. I'll put the link in the chat box now. If you join that group, and uh, you can easily access more information about the indicators that I use. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I will uh, I'll wrap this session up here. And like I say, pay really close attention to, uh, to some of these equity indexes as we, uh, as we trade into uh, the back end of this week and uh, the early part of next week. Thanks very much, everyone. Hope this helps.